This is going to be a very quick impromptu video of this product I've got here, which is a relatively inexpensive 8 port mid span PoE injector. Now, in my network, I currently don't have any PoE switches. I've just got a pair of basic Unify switches, the non PoE ones. That's been fine for now because the only PoE device I've had has been my access point, so I've just used a single injector for that. However, with all the new kit that I've got, which you'll have seen in my last video, I now need a better way of powering all of that. I looked at getting a PoE switch, but they were quite expensive, so I didn't want to spend that much money on it, especially since I still only need about 5 PoE ports. The other option was to get an injector, just use more injectors like these. However, I didn't really want to do that. These injectors are fine if you're just powering a single device and the, you know, you're feeding like an access point or something like that, or the PoE injector sitting next to the device. But the reason I didn't want to use this is, first of all, it would be a bit messy having about five of these sitting in a wall rack. They'd have to sit on a shelf or something and they'd look a bit messy. But also these basic injectors just put the voltage out constantly, so they always punt out 48 or 24 volts on the output, no matter what device is connected. This is okay if you're just, you've got it sitting connected to an access point that's ceiling mounted or it's plugged directly into the device and so you can see the injectors there. However, in my environment, I've got everything connected to wall plates. So I've got all these ports on the walls around my flat and the injectors would be hidden away in a cupboard. So I could totally see myself connecting an injector up to a wall port and then going along later, plugging a laptop in, forgetting the injectors connected and then frying my laptop. So I wanted something that could safely negotiate voltages. So if I plugged a laptop into it, it wouldn't output a voltage. So that ruled out the basic PoE injectors. So I wanted something a bit neater. So it turns out there are devices for that and they're referred to as PoE mid-span injectors. So my first attempt was to pick up this one here which I picked up used from eBay, which is a giant, weighs an absolute ton thing, like a proper enterprise grade bit of kit, which is from a company called Fai Hong. This thing was, would have been really expensive new, it's about 400 quid new. So I bought this for about 70 quid, which is a pretty good deal, but unfortunately it doesn't work properly. It sort of runs sometimes, but then it constantly cuts out and loses power, so I need to send this back, it's basically dead. And I couldn't find another one of these available. And the other problem with it was, is it had about 20 watts idle power consumption and it had loud fans, so it was a bit of a pain. So that'll be going back. So I looked at various alternative options, and they seemed to fall into two categories. You either had the really expensive enterprise options, like the ones from Micro Semi or Fai Hong, but they were £300, £400, and I'm not going to spend that given I could get a new switch for that. The other option was more basic ones, which were just little boxes with a few ports and an external power brick. They were quite widely available on places like Amazon, but they didn't look like they'd do proper negotiation, they may just work like the basic injectors, and they didn't seem to output that much current. They, would, they were maybe rated for 60 watts, but then they had 8 ports, so then that wouldn't allow you to get the full wattage on all the ports, so I decided not to go for that either. But in the end I was looking around and came across this device here from Fibre Store, or fs.com, there's a link in the description, which was £91. So that does seem expensive, but given this is probably closer to something like the Fai Hong, maybe a bit lower end, but for £91 versus many hundreds, it still seems like a good deal. So this is an 8 port PoE injector that should handle all the proper negotiation, and is 802.3 AT compatible. So that's compatible with both 15 watt devices and up to 30 watt devices, so it's much higher power than a basic 802.3 AF injector. So it's going to be quite a quick video because it's not that fancy a device, but we'll pop it open and see what we get. So it was sort of their own brand, so it's probably a fairly generic device. So it's probably sold under lots of different names. So here we have a product warranty card. And yeah, lots of sort of relatively badly translated English there. And we get a user guide as well. Yep, you can definitely see it's sort of a white label device because it is copyright our company. So they've not actually even put their own company name on it, but that's that's fine. So that's it there. So let's take a look at the device. So here it is. So it's a proper 1U rack mount PoE injector, which is good because I'll be putting this in a wall cabinet, so this will be so much neater than having separate injectors. Quickly take a look at the accessories as well. We get Nice, power cable to power it, and some rack ears to rack mount it. So it's a fairly simple packaging. So now let's see what we get. So it's in a bag. And here it is. So that's the device there. So while this looks like some sort of 16 port switch, it's actually not, it's an 8 port PoE injector. So there's 16 ports on the front, the bottom ones are just labelled Ethernet, so these are what you connect to your switch, and then the PoE ports at the top are what output the PoE. So you've got port 1, 2, 3, 4, 
all the way to 8 all along the front. So you plug your switch into here and then plug the device into here. It doesn't do any sort of switching, it's just effectively a bank of 8 PoE injectors where the sort of vertically stacked ports are one injector. So that's the front of it there, it's just fairly generic branding on the front. But it does actually weigh quite a bit, you know, this is probably like over a kilogram. So it's, yeah, it's, it's actually got quite a lot of weight to it. It weighs way more than the switch of this size. So it's at least got some sort of guts inside it. Or inside there's just air ventilation. Annoyingly there's a warranty seal. That's a little bit annoying because I'd really like to see inside this. I will probably end up taking it apart anyway. I'll, I'll make sure it works first and then I might end up popping it open. But I might leave it for a wee while just to make sure it definitely works. Around the back, we've got an IC connector for power and a sort of earth bonding connection if you needed to connect that up. And then more ventilation around the other side. And now as for the ratings for this device, because it's 802.3 AT rated, it can do a full 30 watts on each port. And the built-in power supply is rated up to 250 watts, so it can give its full output on all the ports simultaneously, which is really good. That's something that a lot of the cheaper injectors can't handle. So yeah, there's not really much to show for it because that's it there. So all we can really do is try it out. So you may be wondering why you'd want a device like this over a PoE switch. And to be honest, for almost all deployments, a PoE switch is a lot easier. However, there are reasons that you might want something like this instead of going for a switch. For example, you might already have good switches and you just want to add PoE like I do. And this is obviously a lot, lot cheaper than going out and buying new PoE switches. You also might want to explicitly separate your data and power infrastructure. So you've got separate PoE injectors from your switches, so you're not putting all that responsibility in one box. I've also seen manufacturers of these claiming that they're more reliable than PoE switches, but I'm not going to read into that too much because obviously the manufacturers want to sell their boxes. The other use case I can see is that if you're replacing your switches fairly regularly, it might actually work out cheaper to buy PoE injectors and keep using them for a long time and just swap out the switches, because you're not having to keep buying PoE switches every time, which could save a bit of money. And then the final use case I can see for something like this would be if you've got an environment where you've got a lot of ports, but you only want a few to be PoE, you don't need many PoE ports at all. So in an environment like that, you might have a cabinet full of multiple patch panels with multiple switches in it, but then you only maybe need eight PoE ports. Now in that environment, if you're using PoE switches, your option is to either fit all PoE switches or fit one PoE switch and lots of non-PoE switches. The thing I feel is when you start doing that, you get a bit, it gets a bit confusing trying to connect it up because you're gonna to have to connect certain ports to the PoE switch and certain ports to the non-PoE switches. Doing that can mess up the numbering. So in environments that I tend to work with, what I quite like doing is having consistent numbering throughout. So each wall port has a number, that correlates to a patch panel and a port on that patch panel, and then the patch panel ports are mapped one to one with the switch ports. So in my home environment here, if I've got a port labelled A15, that correlates to patch panel A, port 15 on the patch panel, and then that will be mapped directly into port 15 on the switch. This makes it really easy to manage because if I want to change that switch port that's on the wall, I can go into the switch and I know exactly which port it is without having to go and look at the patch panel. So if you've got lots of switches and like only one's PoE, you're not going to have that consistency as much. With something like this on the other hand, you still connect all your patch panels directly to the switches so all the numbers match up, but if you want to connect a device to PoE, you simply patch it through the PoE injector. So I'm not sure how common that is in practice, I've never really seen that done in any sort of industry deployment, although to be fair in a lot of industry de deployments the numbering goes completely mental anyway, no one actually cares about that. But that does seem like another interesting use case for a device like this. So now let's try this thing out. So we've got the PoE injector here connected to power, and as you can see the power lights come on, but none of the lights under any of the ports have come on, so that indicates the ports aren't delivering power. So what we'll now do is we'll connect some devices. So first thing I'll do is I'll just connect this cloud key, so I'll plug that into the front there, into port 1, and you'll see that it will power up. There you go, that's starting up. And if you look under the port, you'll see a little green light has come on, indicating that the port's delivering power. So the next test is to see what happens if we plug a non-PoE device in. This was my main reason for going for this over a basic injector, is that this should also negotiate correctly, so if I plug a standard non-PoE device in, it won't deliver power and therefore won't fry the device. So for this I've got this old laptop here, I am using a very sacrificial old ThinkPad T400 because if this does go wrong I won't be too upset if I break this versus if I broke something more expensive. But I've got a laptop here, so for this the injector has a standard Ethernet cable going into the data port down here, so it'll actually connect the laptop to the network, not just provide power. So we're going to connect this in. So we plug that in there, and we look underneath, you'll see that the LED on that port hasn't come on. So port 1 is lit up, and the power LED is on, but port 2 doesn't have a light. 
So that indicates it's not delivering power. And as we can see down on the laptop here, we successfully have a gigabit connection. So that indicates it has actually survived. It's not that it's put voltage down to the laptop and fried it. Times when I've seen people fry stuff in the past with PoE, it quite often will cause the laptop to only get a 100 meg connection because it'll fry some of the connections within the network interface. So it seems completely happy. So that shows that this injector does safely auto negotiate speed, it also negotiate power. And therefore, if it's left connected to a wall port and I plug a random device in, it's not going to cause damage to the device. And as we see here, just to test even further, if I were to unplug that from there, laptop obviously loses network, and then plug another PoE device in, so this time plug the Unify access point in. This time, the LED will come on, and it will deliver power to that device because it's correctly negotiated it. And even though it's a bit dull to see on camera, the access point is now starting up. You can maybe see it flashing there, it's a bit dark. But yeah, so that has actually worked. Now, while it does have that warranty seal, and while people will probably comment saying they're illegal, that's only in the US, not in the UK, where they are actually enforceable, I can't resist taking this apart. It just qu looks quite cool, so I'm going to take it apart anyway, void the warranty, but hopefully it'll be worth it. I've been trying it for a couple of days, I've had it powering stuff full time for a couple of days now, and it seems to be rock stable, so I'm not too concerned about its reliability. So hopefully we're fine taking it apart, because I really want to see what's inside this thing, because it's got quite a bit of weight to it. So yeah, let's... Pop it open and see what's inside. Okay, so I've removed the screws, so let's open this up and see it for the first time. This better be worth voiding the warranty for. Okay, that's quite a simple little board. So yeah, let's pop in and take a wee look at this. This actually looks fairly, fairly nice inside. Definitely quite simple, but it's got a couple of chips, so we'll take a look at what those are. Okay, so just take a look inside this, and it actually looks quite nice. So over here we've got the power supply itself, which is a 250 watt unit from a brand called Q G w uh, GWS Power. The model number is just GWS 250 watt. I can't really find much information about this online, Doesn't so it's probably not the best brand in the world, but it doesn't look too bad. It's got a fairly good looking PCB. It's got massive heat sinking, so all this metal around here is attached onto the regulator, so it's got pretty decent heat sinking. And, you know, beefy transformer, it doesn't look too bad. The caps are all branded OK cap, which doesn't sound great. i um, never really heard of them. They might be OK, as the name suggests, but they're probably not amazing. But they are all 105, um, 105 degree caps, so they're hopefully going to be reasonably reliable. Especially since this device is fanless. Also, since it's just a fairly standard open frame power supply, this does look quite replaceable if you had to. Then you've got this cable going over to the main board, so it's got positive and negative, just two wires in each, and there's a main board there. So it actually looks quite nice. So first of all, up by the ports here, you've got these transformers. So these are model number HN4821CG. I can't find much information online, but from what I can see here, they're each sort of two port ethernet transformers, because there's four and then there's eight ports, so they probably each handle two ports. Beyond that, the only other things we've got apart from some passive components are the main chips that provide the power over ethernet. So you can see them there, there's two there, and these are actually branded by Microsemi, which is really surprising. So Microsemi are a company that I hadn't really heard of, but they're part of micro Microchip, and they, their main product is PoE injector ICs. They even make full-on rack mount, really high-end, really expensive PoE injectors. So it's really good seeing chips from a specialist supplier that designs these things like as their, as their main product, rather than them from some sort of small off-brand company or using a basic microcontroller. These are proper chips from Microsemi. And the model number is PD69104B1. And we've got two of them there because each handles four ports. So that was really nice seeing micro semi chips in this. It shows it's actually using proper chips that are designed to be reliable from a good brand. And now on the board over here we can see a model number, which is PSC3100-G. So I did a bit digging online, and turns out this is made by a company called ONV. They sell this exact same product under their own brand. And the model of this one in particular, the 8-port version, is the PSE 3108G. So that's the model that they sell it under. And obviously Fibersore have just basically bought those in, rebranded them slightly by changing the logo on the front. The ON ONV one has the ONV logo here, so they've just substituted that with just POE. And they're selling it from their, from their own store. So I went on Alibaba and looked up the original ONV model, and found that if you're buying between 1 and 49 of them, it'll cost $79, which equates to just about £61 in the, using the current exchange rates. 
So to be honest, given the fact that it's £61 to buy it from Alibaba, or £77 before tax for me to buy it from Fibre Store, that's not too bad. So sure, like, it's maybe £16 more, but in getting it from Fibre Store, it meant that I got it from, you know, a proper re reputable company who, with, like, next day or two-day shipping, I think it was, with decent support. So to be honest, the price isn't actually that bad when you factor in that it's only £16 more than buying it directly from the manufacturer on AliExpress. £77 before tax, or £91 I think it was after tax, isn't too bad a price for this thing. So there you go. That was a quick look at this 8-port mid-span PoE injector, available from FS.com. And it actually looks quite good. I mean, it was £91, which is quite expensive, but to be honest, when you factor in the price of individual injectors versus something like this, as well as taking into account the fact that this does proper auto negotiation, it doesn't seem like a bad deal. And taking it apart was definitely very interesting, because seeing the fact that it uses those proper micro semi chips has definitely boosted my confidence in this device. So I know that it's using proper dedicated chips to do the PoE sensing, rather than some sort of dodgy microcontroller with some sort of firmware that I can't really trust on it. So it's really good to know that this uses proper reputable ICs from a reputable company. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and as always, there's a link in the description if you want to buy this.